uh, hello students in this video i will explain uh, euclidean algorithm which is actually used to find uh, the greatest common divisor of any two numbers so this person uh, euclid has given this particular method uh, to find the gcd which is more commonly used in the cryptographic algorithms now <clears throat> see what is gcd is i'll just uh, recap this uh, particular topic greatest common divisor it is a big problem actually in the number theory to so finding the gcd is very important there are no so many algorithms and the euclidean algorithm is one of the method to find the gcd of two numbers now what is gcd of say number a and b the so gcd of say number a and b let us consider 60 and 24 as example is 12 this is the largest number which divides both 60 as well as 24 now the gcd of two zeros is nothing but it is zero and as you are use uh, as you know Uh, that the gcd is always a positive number okay so often actually we want let us say we have some you know relatively prime numbers okay the we call the numbers as relatively prime if there are no common factors except one now for example let us say the gcd of 8 and 15 is equal to 1 that's what i have given here that means the common factor between these two numbers that is 8 and 15 is 1 no other number divides 8 and 15 so only one divides 8 in 15 that is these two numbers are actually called as relatively prime numbers and the gcd of a co prime number or relatively prime number is always equal to 1 now coming to the uh, euclidean algorithm so what exactly we have to do here and how to find the gcd that i will explain now see let us say we have two numbers a and b the two integers and uh, let us consider d as the Uh, gcd of the two numbers a and b the greatest common divisor okay now we have we want to find out this d by using the euclidean algorithm what is the first step the first step is from the revision algorithm you know that a is divided by b and applying the division algorithm i can simply represent something like this the relationship between the two integers a and b that is divisor b and the number a with a quotient q1 and the remainder r1 okay where that remainder r1 is always between 0 to b it is less than b now a is equal to q1 into b plus r1 is the general rule from the division algorithm okay so any number say a is equal to quotient multiplied by the divisor plus if any remainder exists in that division process now if i consider that if there is no remainder you now because of this particular operation that means we say that b divides a that is b completely divides a without any remainder in that case the gcd of the two numbers is simply equal to b okay so for example let us say i have taken up an example here the numbers are a is equal to 12 and b is equal to 6 to prove this so here i am dividing b sorry a by b that is 12 is divided by 6 2 times it goes the quotient is uh, 2 here right that is 12 is equal to 2 times 6 and there is no remainder that means 6 divides 12 in the very first step itself we got the gcd of the number and that gcd is nothing but it is 6 isn't it now in case r1 is not equal to 0 when i divide a by b if remainder is not equal to 0 So in that case, what we have to do, we have to go to the next step. Okay, in the Euclidean algorithm, the algorithm given by Euclid. Now, before going into the next step, let us consider that uh, d always divides the remainder. If r1 is not equal to zero, in that case, d always divides r1. That is, just take an example over here again. A is equal to 15 if I assume, and b is equal to 6. Okay, so in that case, r1 is not equal to zero, right? R1 equal to 3. We have a remainder equal to 3 and quotient equal to 2. Okay. Now what is the remainder between 15 and 6? It is 3, right? That means D is 3 and that actually divides the remainder over there. Remainder is also 3. So this condition actually holds good. So what I want to say here is the relations D over A, that is D divides A. If D by D divides B together, we can say that D actually divides A minus Q1 into B, where this A minus Q1 into B is the thing, but it is the remainder. That is, D actually divides R1. A minus Q1 B from this equation, A minus Q1 B is the thing, but it is the remainder. So D actually divides R1. Now, going into the next step in the Euclidean algorithm, assuming that in the very first step, remainder is not equal to zero. What we have to do? obviously b is actually 
greater than R1. So what we can do is we have a second number. Okay, you divide that second number by the reminder, the reminder, first reminder. Okay, that is the next step. So what we get from the division algorithm, we get this particular equation. That is, we are dividing this b by r1, and we get some quotient and r, some reminder r2. You may get reminder equal to r2. You may not get reminder equal to zero. Reminder equal to zero, or reminder is not equal to zero. If reminder equal to zero, we take the decision. What decision we take? If reminder is equal to zero, the previous reminder, that is r1 itself, is the GCD. Right? That's what I'm saying here. If R2 is equal to 0, then D is equal to R1, where D is satisfied, it is the GCD of the two numbers. In case this R2 is not equal to 0, then what we have to do? We have to find the GCD between R1 and R2. That means we have to divide R1 by R2. Find R1 by R2. So what exactly we get? Yesterday. So in that case, I can say that uh, if I represent that by using a division algorithm, I can say that R1 is equal to Q3 into R2 plus some reminder R3, right? That is the equation what I will get. But, so what exactly we have to do in the algorithm is, we have to continue this process, okay, until the reminder actually becomes zero. A zero reminder, we have what this, this is what we have to get. Assuming that we get at the n plus 1th stage, we get the reminder equal to zero, where we divide Rn minus 1 by Rn. Okay, the previous stage value Rn minus 1 is divided by Rn and we get a reminder equal to 0. So, in that case, the GCD is nothing but it is the previous reminder. That is, whatever the reminder you got in the n minus 1th stage. So, this is theoretical aspect. Now, I summarize all these things. I will put together all the equations. Now, just look at this. So, I have a two numbers A and B. In the very first step, I divided A by B and by using division algorithm, I represented something like this. That is A equal to Q1B plus R1. Okay. Assuming that reminder is not equal to 0, the R1 is not equal to 0. What we have to do? We have to divide B by R1. Right. So B is equal to, I get some portion Q2 now, R1 plus reminder R2. If R2 is equal to 0, then previous reminder is the GCD. If reminder is not equal to 0 in the second step, then we have to go to the next step. That is, you divide this R1 by R2. Divide this R1 by R2. So R1, how to represent it by division division algorithm? So R1 is actually equal to Q3 into R2 plus R3. Some reminder is present. Reminder can be zero again. If reminder is zero, then the previous reminder itself is a GCD. If reminder is not equal to zero, then again you divide this R2 by R3. Just continue this process. Assuming that I reach the n minus one stage over here, R n minus one. Okay, I'm dividing that number by R n. Fine. In that case, I can represent by applying a division algorithm like this mathematically. So, Rn minus 1 is equal to Qn plus 1, Rn plus. Now, I got a reminder equal to 0. If reminder is equal to 0, the previous reminder is the GCD, that is, D is equal to GCD of A comma B is the previous reminder of this operation or this step. Okay. So, we have to continue this until you get the reminder equal to 0. I have taken a, one example here, 8 and 15, again I might have taken a previous uh, slide. Both are co-prime numbers, so their GCD is simply calculated with as 1, because both are relatively prime numbers. Now I will take a few examples, just look at this. I want to find out the GCD of 60 and 24, what is the solution? How to find it? By applying these equations, what we have to do? We have to divide A by B, that is 60 by 24, so divide 60 by 24. Then represent by using this method. How to represent it? 60 is equal to 2 times it goes 24 plus reminder is equal to 12. So what does it mean? Reminder is not equal to 0. Correct. Next, what we have to do? We have to divide this uh, no, number uh, 24 by 12, right? This B by reminder R1. So how I can write? Yes. 24 is equal to 2 into 12, okay? And reminder is equal to 0 in this case, correct? If this is the case, the previous reminder, whatever I got, that is R1, is such but it is the GCD. So the answer is just stop here and find the GCD. So the GCD is 12, the previous reminder. Now I'll take one more example. Since bit a large number, 270 and 192. So divide 270 by 192. This is the first step. What is the answer? 270 is equal to 1, that is a quotient, into 192 plus 78 is a reminder. 
So R1 is not equal to 0. So next step is divide 192 by 78. Okay, divide 192 by 78. So uh, what is the answer? 192 is equal to 2 times it goes with 36 as the reminder. Again, okay. reminder is not equal to 0. Correct, isn't it? So reminder is 36 here. So divide 78 by uh, 36 now. Okay, so divide 38, 78 by 36. What is the answer? It is 78 is equal to 2 times 36 plus 6 is the reminder. Reminder is still not equal to 0. Divide 36 by 6 this is the next step. Okay, fine. Now, I am dividing here and reminder is actually equal to 0. I reached the last state. The previous reminder, the previous reminder that is R3, R6, whatever I have is the answer. That is GCD of the two numbers. That is 6 in this case. So, again, these two are very simple examples, two simple numbers because we always use this greatest common divisor to find uh, the GCD, sorry, this uh, Euclid algorithm. You create an algorithm to find the GCD of larger numbers. Now, just look at this example. I am going one step further. So, I have a numbers 1070 and 1066. So, these two are my numbers. So, first thing is we have to divide this number by this number, right? That is A by A by B. Okay, fine. So, how to represent it? 1070 is 1 times 1066 and there is a reminder of 904. The rest step is we have to find out the GCD between 1066 and 904 that is B and R1 that is B and R1 here we go fine again the reminder is not equal to 0 over here right so we have to find the GC between 904 and 162 that is divide 904 by 162 yes now again the reminder is not equal to 0 one step more let us see so 94 now again reminder is not equal to 0 over here correct so divide 94 by 68 so 94 is equal to 1 into 68 plus 26 is the reminder, not equal to 0 for again. Okay, 68 by 26. 68 is equal to 2 times 26 plus 16. Again, reminder is not equal to 0. Divide 26 by 16. 26 is equal to 1 into 16 plus 10. Reminder is not equal to 0. Divide 16 by 10. 16 is equal to 1 into 10 plus 6. Reminder is not equal to 0. Find the GCD between 10 and 6. That is divide 10 by 6. 1 times. Reminder is equal to 4. Again, no, uh, not 0. So, 6 by 4. So, 6 is equal to 1 into 4 plus 2. Again, not equal to 0. Now, it is equal to 0, right? So, 4 is equal to 2 into 2 plus reminder equal to 0. Now, we got a reminder equal to 0. Previous reminder is the GCD. That is 2. So, the answer is GCD between the two numbers, 1070 and 1066 is 2. Okay. Now, just look at this example. A huge number, right? It's a very huge number. This is where the Euclidean algorithm is useful because most of the encryption algorithm, cryptographic algorithm, works with a, such a large numbers, and finding the GCD is one of the important factor. Okay, now I start with uh, dividing A by B. Okay, so I have a divide, dividend, divisor, and the quotient reminder. Now, the first operation. A equal to 1, B equal to this number, I got a quotient equal to 3, reminder equal to this huge number, right? Reminder is not equal to 0. So, what we have to do? Divide this B by this R1. Okay, now, so B divided by R1, quotient is again 1, there is a reminder over here, right? Okay. Now, we have to divide R1 by R2. So, R1 and R2, that's what the divide, dividend and divisors are. Two times it goes with this particular reminder, R3. The next one is again, reminder is not equal to 0, so that's why I divide R2 by R3. We get a reminder again. So, reminder equal to R4, right? Now, you divide this R3 by R4. So, my dividend and divisor I have taken over here, 2 times it goes, and reminder is this number, that is uh, 1,37,984. It's a huge number again, reminder is not equal to 0. So, divide R4 by R5. So, R4, R5, 11 times it goes, reminder is 70,070, again not equal to 0. Continue the process, Euclidean algorithm. Uh, quotient is 1 and reminder is 67,914. Again, further division is possible. So, divide six, R6 by R7. So, we get a quotient equal to 1 over here and reminder R8 equal to 2,156. Divide R7 by R8. Again, reminder is 1,078 here. Further, one more step. Now, we got reminder equal to 0. After dividing R8 by R9, we got the reminder R10 equal to 0. So, what should be the answer? The previous reminder, right? 1078. So, the answer is 1078. 
So, in say some seven to eight steps, we can very easily find out the GCD of such a large numbers. This is the advantage of Euclidean algorithm. So, in this video, I have explained uh, algorithm given by Euclidean or Euclid to find the co greatest common divisor of large numbers. Thank you for watching this video.